<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen. I'm so glad that you joined me today. If you're joining me live, welcome. If you're joining me on replay, which is probably most of you, I'm so glad you joined me afterwards. Uh, be sure and comment below and uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself and where you're... Um, where you're viewing from. Uh, we all, we will have this uh, live on uh, replay on YouTube later, and of course it will stay on Facebook. This is originating on a Monday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on my Facebook page for Good Knit Kisses. That's, uh, that's facebook.com slash Good Knit Kisses YouTube. That's really long, I know. All right, so I'm so glad that you joined me today. Today is clue number four, yay, in the stitch along, and I'm gonna show you how to make it on the loom. Now, you could, of course, make it on needles. I've got that video out. It was just launched, so if you did not see that, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I had a little bit of a glitch this morning, and for some reason, it wasn't set to go out <laughs> at like 1 a.m. when I originally thought I said it. So, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the blog was up, uh, but anyway, the notes for the loom knitting is is on the blog as well so we talk about the needles scroll down to the bottom beneath the um, play of the video for needles and you will see the notes for the loom and after we're done with this we will put this little video in there to show you how to do the loom so welcome and good morning I have samples for you um, I'm gonna say hello to everybody thank you so much for joining us hi Angie she's the first to comment hi Robin and Heather hi there <laughs> Angie, oh, thank you. Love the hair. Mm, thank you, darling. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, Judy, I see you joined. Hey, Peggy and Jameson, what, North Carolina. Crystal, hello, and happy Thanksgiving to the Canadians out there. Hello, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And we've got our American th Thanksgiving coming up next month. Uh, we're, we're a month behind you, of course. <laughs> I actually kind of wish ours was a little earlier, a little more separation between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Can I get an amen from the fellow Americans? I mean, I know I, I enjoy it, but, you know, I Thanksgiving is the holiday that I really enjoy. Um, I, I enjoy more than Halloween. I don't, I'm not really a Halloween-y person, so I'm sort of like, yeah, bring on the Thanksgiving. <laughs> it needs to be earlier. I'll celebrate with the Canadians next year. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, Teresa. Hey, Millie. Hey, Eva. How are you? Hi, Carol. Happy Thanksgiving, Carol. <laughs> hey, Kayla. Hey, Gail. Hey, Lily. How are you guys? Oh, and you're uh, from Pennsylvania, and she's a loomer. Joanne's on. She's a loomer. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, St Hi Elizabeth. <laughs> Joanne's other half. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, good morning. And Gail says, I would like Thanksgiving earlier, too. Okay, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> hey, Amy in Ohio. And Rosa. Hello, April. I agree. Thanksgiving needs to be sooner, Carrie says. Yeah. Yeah. What do we do? Who do we petition? Hmm. What can we do? <laughs> hmm. You can, you can hear my voice is still a little rough. I have been um, postponing doing some more filming on videos because it has been rough. <laughs> um, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. I'm so sorry. I really, really wanted to surprise you guys and have a live loom knitting demo on something else. I'm about to do this demo here, but there's something I really want to show you. And I've been debating, do I do it live or not? Because I'll be coughing and I can't mute this video <laughs> when it's live. <laughs> so anyway, oh my goodness. Okay. So be sure, and um, we're going to give you the link here in a second, and it is going to be for the blog. That's where you want to go to get clue number four. We've got all the notes that you need for the needles, uh, tips and tricks. It'll have the video in there on the blog, on the website. Lots of goodies on you, on uh, Good Knit Kisses' website, so be aware of that. And then down below the video will be all the loom knitting notes, and we've got that for weeks one through four so far. And then after this video, this video will be back up on that page. So if you have trouble finding it, always start with Good Knit Kisses and uh, and use that search bar and uh, just type in a simple word that you want to find. And there's lots of information on there. So we're constantly trying to improve it. Be sure and comment on the um, website and uh, and uh, and then we let let us know. Um, you know. 
how what what you think of the the articles and all that kind of stuff. And uh, anyway, so I want to tell y'all something before I start. We are going to be having a giveaway. Yay! <laughs> We're going to have a giveaway for the Burnett Blanket Stitch Along. Are you excited? <laughs> So we're going to have a giveaway. Um, I can't give you all the details just, just yet. We're still ironing out a couple of them. We will have it all listed on the website and you will get enough yarn. There'll be, um, there'll be three winners and you'll get enough yarn to knit the blanket all over again and give to someone um, or use it for something else. So um, there'll be, we're going to have uh, knitting winners. You can be loom knitter or needle knitter, whatever. And um, we'll be posting photos to the Good Knit Kisses um, uh, Facebook page uh, and uh, that kind of thing. So we'll give you details later, but it's going to be every, um, it'll be um, enough balls for you. The, the, um, the question that many people will have, it's for North America. So um, it's just North America only. These are the rules from um, the supplier of the yarn, uh, which would be uh, Yarn Inspirations and Burnett. And um, we are um, uh, going to get you those details later. So give us some hearts if you're excited about having a contest uh, and, and having a giveaway for yarn. Yay! <laughs> uh, the crochet crowd is doing one for the crochet stuff. And we'll be doing the knitting one. And we want to get as many people involved as possible, right? So we're so excited. And we want to see your lovelies going on as well. Look at all those hearts coming through. Yay! <laughs> Love it. Love it. Oh, man. Well, um, I am. Um, oh, Denise is on. She says first time she could do a video. I teach school and it's Columbus Day. Yes. My kids are home, too, because it's Columbus Day. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so glad that you could join us. <laughs> we. Um, oh, I'm scrolling through. OK, I, I saw someone's comment. I'm like, I don't understand. I'll go back to it later. So I'm so glad you guys are joining me. OK, so. I've got my notes from, I've got my iPad here, and it's showing clue number four. So I'm going to get into it, and um, if you haven't been joining us and you want to know, remember that um, we do have all those videos available on the website, so you're going to go to Good Knit Kisses and look for clues one, two, three, and four each week. And then when we do have the contest, we will have that up on the webpage. So get ready, and we will be demonstrating... Um, Oh, Ellie, she says, I, I demonstrated loom knitting yesterday and advertised Good Knit Kisses as the best place to learn. Thank you, Ellie. Well, congratulations. That's so awesome that you were getting, you were getting to demo loom knitting. So way to go. Sending you some big hearts. <laughs> and thank you for that little plug there. That was very kind. So um, that's exciting that you get to show other people. I, I love when people teach other people. So yay. All right. So I'm going to show you some stuff. Um, oh, do you want to tease for next week? This is on needles, but mittens. Actually, it's later this week on Friday. Mittens. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> give me some hearts if you like that little plug right there. <laughs> all right, cool. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, here. Ooh, let's let's juice up here. Mm. Got my coffee going. Okay. All right. Let's flip this screen here, and I'm gonna flip this sample so you can really see it. Okay. Yay! All the hearts for that. So exciting. Your internet's crazy. Oh no. All right. Let's flip this. Okay. Get my lighting. There we go. There we go. Okay. So this is a sample of what it was like on the needles. And so I just took my needle sample from the video and I popped it on the loom so you can see what it looks like. And then I made it on. Um, I, I, then I did it on the, on the loom and I'm going to explain why this looks a little different from this, but this is, this is the sample that I knit on the loom and this is the sample that is, um, needle knit. So it is a three color design. You see that? So we're working with color A and then C and then B. So this week we're working with three colors. Okay. And, uh, thank you. We've got the clue up now. Uh, we've got, uh, in the comments, uh, below, is the uh, link to the um, web page. Okay, so I've got two samples on here right now just so that you can see that. And this is what the back looks like. Okay, nice and loose. 
And then here's the back of the Luminate sample. All right, so let's just compare for a second before we get really started. This is a 12 stitch pattern repeat. Um, this one you're seeing uh, two, two repeats, okay? I'm not 12 stitch, I'm so sorry. This is a 12 row pattern repeat, okay? And then, um, I gotta get more length on this yarn that's next to me here. I don't know why I'm having such an issue with the yarn. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so what I did is I wanted to see what that looked like. So this is um, this is a repeat here, and I worked with um, I, I worked with uh, unit stitches, and then I have some uh, slipping stitches in front of the pegs, and this is without um, e wrapping that. So this is a normal u wrap with um, without e wrapping it, and it looks very similar to this, except it doesn't have as much length or height, right? Would you agree? Hit that like button if you would agree to that. Um, but it looks really nice. Then I tried it with, um, let's get it closer. So see what that looks like? And then see what that looks like? Okay, now this is 21, if I remember correctly, that's 21, and then this is 11, so I just, I just did 11 pegs here. Um, so uh, this one right here is where I changed it, and then I started where I'm holding the yarn in front of the peg, I e-wrapped it to give it a little more length, but I don't think the bumps are as pronounced, and I was also very loose with my U-wrap. So um, you might want to like do an experiment and cast on 11 like I did just to get um, just to get a good sample going and see which way you like it. So if you like them more pronounced, you may um, you may not want to e-wrap it. You may want to do that and you just need longer length because what we're doing this week is we're making a panel in this stitch pattern and the width is fine, but it's the length that we need. And then um, the. Uh, um, I can't even talk. <laughs> Sorry, I got a notification on my phone. Uh, so the the length the width is fine, but the length is what is going to change. But you only you need to knit 48 inches this week. So if you like it more pronounced, um, then don't worry about it being a shorter stitch. I think it looks nice. Okay, so do you see how that looks? But it's like a flatter look. It's really kind of cool looking, but it does have a less pronounced look. All right. So I just want you to see that first of all. All right, let me get my sample ready here. Now that I've thoroughly got everything <laughs> out of whack, turning this over. Okay, those are those samples there. Now, um, you can cast on in either direction. Um, this week, um, when you look at the pattern, um, let me let me get this out right now. Okay, let me see if I can. I don't know if I can get it. Um, move that aside so you can see it. So when we scroll down on the blog, scroll all the way down. That's there. It's embedded here. That's for the needles, and then this is the notes for loom knitters here, and this is clue four. Um, okay, so. Row one starts uh, with um, A and then we purl and we slip with yarn in front of the peg right here. Now on the pattern, it starts row A on the wrong side for needles. And this is the only week that it does that. So if you've been paying attention so far, um, I have been starting my um, my row one on the right and then working my way to the left, but I had to cast on um, uh, in a, in that way, uh, so I'm I'm doing it a little bit different this week, and I'm working my um, I'm working my rows just slightly different. So um, I got to fix my lighting here. I'm going to set this over to the side here in a second, but let me just go over the the 12 row repeat. So we'll be working with a purl. So you can work in either direction, okay? And it's casting on 27 stitches in a, which is gray for me. Row one is with A, we're going to purl, and then we slip with the yarn in front of the peg. So we just hold that yarn in front of the peg, and then we purl, and then we repeat back and forth until you get to the end of the row. 
So every other peg is going to have two lines on it, going to have two stitches on it. Okay, it's it's really, it's slipped. Now, normally on needles, it's actually going to be worked, but on the um, on this particular pattern, we're knitting one below on the next row, and so we're treating it as a setup row, the row before, by slipping it. Otherwise, you'd have a hard time grabbing it. So we've done this before on, I think it was week two, and, um, what was it week one? Anyway, we, we had to, we had to set up, um, yeah, week two. Okay. So then after you set up in a, you switch, you go ahead and switch to C. Okay. Then you knit one and knit one below. So where you had skipped every other peg, that's where you knit one below. And then again with C, so you go one way, um, knitting, we're going to go from right to left. Um, uh, yeah, knitting across, and then the next row is the setup row, and we're going left to right, and we'll be setting it up again in the same color, and um, we'll be starting with purl two and slip with the yarn in front of the peg, and then purl one and every other one. So you can see, like we skipped every other peg it was a setup before, and then we. Um, start with the purl two to shift it over and then it'll be every other peg. So we're shifting it every other time. And then we change colors. We change for three different colors. So anyway, when I get back with color C and go back to the right, then I will add B and then I work all those pegs that were set up. And then I set up with B and I purl once instead of twice. Okay, and then we just zigzag back and forth, and it is a 12 row repeat. But the cool advantage is on the loom, once you kind of get the pattern in your head, you actually don't need to worry about oh, what what pattern repeat am I on because it becomes intuitive, it's actually easier on the loom to remember what you're grabbing next, and you just simply are grabbing the next yarn and rotating it out. So that's what I'm going to show you off camera here. So let me see if there's any questions before I move on. If you're just joining me, I'm sorry. I'm like a heavy breather today. I'm still not feeling well, so I'm having a little bit of a trouble. Okay. All right. Let me get my, um, I've got to get my light back, back up because I messed it up. So hold on a second, you guys. It is messed up and it's way in front of me. Okay. There we go. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Is this live? <laughs> if I was recording, you wouldn't hear any of this junk. <laughs> All right. I need to get my yarn settled. Okay, now, a hint. You're working with three colors, and I'm starting, yes, I'm starting in the middle of the row, um, but... Uh, I want to say that you're going to start, see my, my tail is on the right here. If you want to work the way I'm working, what I did is I started my cast on. I did a double um, E-wrap cast on and I put my first peg here and then I double E-wrap cast on all the way down to 11 for my sample, but 27 is what you actually need for, um, for your, for your uh, actual knitting. And then I went all the way down to here and row one starts here. Okay, so I've already set this up. Your cast on row gets that first edge. So you notice like every color is two rows. So the cast on here imitates that first part of that color. Okay, so now I'm going to go with my setup row, which is row one. All right, so after all that, now I'm finally getting into it. But um, I've got my color that I'm working with on the left here. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about this just for a second so it's easier when I get to it. But my other two colors are right here. They are, hang on, these two, okay? So what I've done is I've got them over on this side in the order that I need them next. So when I'm done, I'll rotate this over here and then I'll grab the next color to be used. And that can be off the side. I, you don't. I know every, not everybody works on a table. I'm just doing it on a table because, well, that's that's what's happening for this tutorial here. Um, let me get untangled because I had to move this from where the place I was working. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still setting up. When I flipped it over, I got it all messed up. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
row one. Let's set it up. So we're going to start with a pearl. Okay. Pearl one. Let's zoom in. Pearl one. And now we're going to slip with the yarn in front of the peg. That's it. You're just holding it in front. And then we knit, or I'm sorry, we, we purl the next peg, the next peg, like this. Okay? And then we skip this peg. So you're slipping with the yarn in front of the peg, and you purl this one. So it makes it real easy. You're just doing every other one. See that? So if you want to um, have it more elongated, you could e wrap these pegs in between. You could do this. So if you're testing it for yourself, I suggest doing a couple of the 12 peg repeats and, and do that right there like that. And if you want to make it less than um, 11, you could try seven uh, for a smaller sample here. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it in front just so you can see literally what it is. I know that Joanne Gay has tested her. She did it on a Kiss Loom. And so um, it's going to be uh, more like a e wrap because I mean, uh, more of a U wrap because it's just it's working it all through there. Okay, and then, oops. Okay, that was purled, and then we hold this one. We're coming down to the last one, and then this is held in front, and then we purl. Okay, so left to right is the setup, and again, you can work in opposite direction if it's easier for you. You see how these are all just held? I didn't work them. Okay. Row two, we're going to grab uh, our uh, next yarn. Um, let's see. And we're going to do C. So let's move my A over. And then I want to grab from the bottom this one. So look here, I'm grabbing from the bottom. This is when you are changing color, but when you add the first color in, all you do is you just um, lay it in front like this and just work it. So, and then leave that tail. So, so you can see how my tails did it here. And then as I grab them from the side, like I was showing you, see how it like braids it up the side. And then this side, it looks like this over here. So it's very similar looking, see that? There's no loose ends to take care of. And then these edges are going to get taken care of later on. That's all I'll say about that. So that was a hint. <laughs> all right. So uh, now I'm going to work with um, C and I'm going to knit one. And then I'm going to knit one below. And all I'm doing is holding my yarn back here for a unit stitch. And I'm grabbing both stitches that were held over and knitting that over. Let me back up a little bit. Okay, hold on. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to. So sorry. Okay. And then we knit. And you're just knitting across. And you're grabbing those two yarns that were being held. And knit across. That's it. It's real simple. So knit across. It's knit one, knit one below, knit one, knit one below. Now I'm on the other side. I'm going to pull out some more yarn for my next row, and this is going to be a setup row. So I continue on the same one that I just did when I'm setting it up. Okay? So now I'm going to look at my pattern, and my pattern says to um, purl two, because remember this one had two stitches here. So now I'm going to um, make it shift and I'm going over to this third stitch is where it's being held. So I'm going to purl one, two, and then I skip this first one, slip with the yarn in front of the peg, and then I purl this one. So you will notice that it's shifted from the row that you do before. So you'll get to a point where when you are knitting and you're working your way back here where you know, okay, I'm just knitting everything. Um, before you finish these last few pegs, take a look and notice what has been held before so you can know what to work next. Now, after you do a few rows where you've been paying attention to the pattern, then you'll start to notice... Um, 
you'll start to note, I don't know, see, I just worked this one because I'm talking and not doing it. Okay, I'm gonna hold that one. Then you'll start to notice um, that shaping up and then how that works for you. So let's go down here. When you get down to the end, you've got two at the end that get purled to finish out that row. So it's two stitches inward, two, two stitches inward, and then, um, uh, then it slipped, okay? And now I, um, I'm gonna drop this yarn, I'm gonna move this over, and I'm gonna rotate my next yarn over to the left here so that I can work it. I know I'm just working with this one, and then I kind of move my yarns down. Okay, and then that way my yarns don't get all crisscrossy, right? They're just gonna, they're not gonna get all jumbled up. Okay, so now I'm gonna work these stitches. I'm just gonna bring this next yarn up, and if you're adding the yarn just like you did before, you're just gonna leave a nice tail and hold this here and then work that first stitch. But for now, because I'm working with yarns being twisted, I'm just pulling up that next one and it naturally causes that braid. Let's just work across, knitting all the stitches. But it reads, knit two, knit one below, knit two, knit one below, and then all the way to the end until you have two left, and then you knit two. And I'm using color B. Okay. And now I'm gonna set up again, and because I had the two at the end, now I'm going to do how many? The one. So we're going to purl one and slip that yarn in front of the peg and then purl the next one. Slip it, purl, slip it, purl, slip it, purl, and again, you could e-wrap those, slip it, and purl. That's it. Now rotating again, moving it over, grab the next one. This is now back on to A, and I'm going to knit it, and knit it, one below, knit, knit one below. So if we had not held these I would have to come back here and pick up a stitch from the back and place it on here and then do it. So we've gotten rid of all those gymnastics. So on the loom, this is an ideal pattern. So it, you're not having to do that. So with the setup, it, it's real easy. There's no struggle finding that stitch below. It's just, it's all gravy. <laughs> so now I've done that. Whoops. Let me fix that. <clears throat> and so this one was um, knitting two stitches here. Okay, that's that knit one below here. So now we know, now I'm back on this other color again because we were down here before when we started. And now I know to I go to shift back over to the right. So what do we do? We purl two. So purl one. Purl two, and now we slip with the yarn in front of the peg and continue on. Remember, it's still every other peg being slipped in the main body of this. It's just shifting on the edges. So what you're doing is you're kind of making a garter stitch because every other row is knit or purl, but it doesn't really look like a garter stitch. All right, so now I'm back and I need to go with C again. So I rotate my yarns and I move this C over here. You can see how if you have like a, a bucket to your side or something, a bowl, um, you can just move them around and see how my yarn is not getting tangled at all. And then I just start with my C and continue. So I'm not even looking at my pattern now. And yes, I have worked this several times, but I, because of the way this pattern is set up, it's really intuitive. 
So you'll get it once you get, you know, first looking at the pattern right now, you're like, oh man, this is going like, to take me a while. And you can get yourself a row counter and, and, and you can print this off and kind of check it off and go through the first um, maybe 24 rows and you can do that. But after a while, you're going to start noticing what I was showing you. Okay, so let's flip it over. I want to show you again. Okay, so again, if you're slipping with the yarn in front of the peg, just as I do without e-wrapping, it's going to look more like this. If you look at this part, this is where I had experimented making it a unit stitch. Now look again. Now I'm at, up here. I had this is where I had started today because I did this last night with the unit stitch, and then before that I did the um, the uh, just holding it in front of the peg. Now you can see 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 how it's like popping out a little bit more, and um, you can also like be sure and stretch out it afterwards and like pull on it, and they they kind of pop out too. So I noticed that um, this one, when I um, pulled on it, it actually popped out my stitches a little bit more. See how they're more pronounced? So remember that as you get more knitting on, it's going to be more true. Or you can take it off of the pegs with the stitch holder or like a scrap piece of yarn and kind of play with it and really see. Because when the stitches are up close to the loom, you know that it, it pulls it really tight and it's more... Um, obscured. It's not It's not how it really is going to be when it's living off of the loom. Because on the loom, it's just, it's going to be stretched. And that's just the natural, um, that's the natural tendency with the loom. Okay, so that is what that looks like. That's really all you need to know. I don't even have to go through all 12, um, all 12 rows. And again, if you just join me late, this is what the needle version looks like. I had just thrown it onto the loom. And so see how it's just kind of quite a bit poofier. Now you could use a larger gauge uh, loom than this one just for this particular one to get it poofier <laughs> but we've been using I've been using the same loom for the majority of well for all the other weeks so I'm trying to use the same loom that I have been using before um, the width on it will be fine with this gauge but if you're trying to go for something that has a little bit more poof to it um, you know such a technical term poof <laughs> then that's what you would want to do. So I hope that helps. And uh, let's see if we have any questions that I can answer. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Allison said, I'm glad this is just knit and purl, but it looks confusing. I want to do this. And I have the itch to do it, but it looks hard. I wonder if I can. Allison, it really isn't that hard. It, it may appear that way, but once you get going... Um, Allison, I think you're really going to um, enjoy it. Um, it's matter. It's a, it's one of those things. It's a matter of like doing it. It's like riding a bicycle. Like until you get on and you do it for a while, it it seems intimidating. It may be hard at first, but once you get going, it's just like whoa! Like wow! What what was holding me back <laughs> for so long, right? So. Um, Please, please try it. Um, this is 11 stitches wide, so you don't have to go to the 27 to test it out. Um, it's like a, it's like a two plus five pattern repeat. So it's like um, a multiple of two here and then five um, on the end. So like you could go with, um, instead of 11, you could go with like, uh, uh, what did I say? Did I say seven? Let's just do 11 because it works really well and you can get a nice big uh, size. This is probably... I don't have my measuring tape with me, but there, you can <laughs> to gauge the size. You can see how big it is with my hook. So uh, let's see if anybody else has questions. Um, once you get the rhythm, it's easy. Uh, Elizabeth says, yeah, the loom does look easier than the needles. Hi, Martha. This is the stitch along. Um, let me see if I can get the thing into frame. Uh, so we worked on this last week. This is what we worked on last week, and um, and we were just holding some pegs, and um, anyway, it's this really pretty look to it, and then this week, let me see if I can flip my sample over. So this is this week, so this is what it looked like on the needles for clue number four, and um, you may find, um, hey, I really like this for um, making an entire blanket out of this. Um, so, um, I suggest you test it out, um, look at week, weeks one and two video and check it out on goodknitkisses.com. We've got all the loom pattern written out for you. All the notes for needles are above it 
and then we have the video for needles then we have loom and we will put the loom video for here on here for reference later so this is goodknitkisses.com and um and it's on the blog you can click on the link below for the um the quick link um i think that is it for the clue and if you're just joining me let me flip over here ah it's bright it's bright <laughs> if you're just joining me, there is a giveaway and uh, we will be getting more details out this week. I'm just ironing out the rest of it, but there will be three winners in North America. You have to reside in North America. You have to be of legal age. Um, you will be getting, the, it'll be a knitter, needle, or a loom. Okay, um, you have to be able to um, be making your project. And you'll take a, a picture of the project. You'll find out more about that later. And um, we'll give you several weeks to work on your projects and uh, to get that entry in. And then you will earn enough yarn to um, make a whole other blanket or make other things uh, be perfect for a gift. Or if you made this one for a gift and then if you like it, you can make it again for yourself. So um, anyway, so there is the link again for clue number four. And, uh, oh, thanks, Liz. She says, another awesome video. I am so excited. Uh, if you had joined me before and you um, saw some of the things going on, you saw some brioche being shown. I have some brioche back there. We did it on needles and on the looms. I have a video for that. Um, we have also this right here. This is the Step It Up Knit Shawl, which has that sort of hitchhiker look. It's a boomerang or crescent shawl. That is on needles. I'm going to work on a loom one for you guys. And I also have mittens. <laughs> that is coming out, and you'll be able to see that. Um, I'm excited to show you. And what else? What else? I made this for my son. This is for my son and my daughter. <laughs> I'm actually, um, Joanne doesn't, I don't even think Joanne knows this. I'm going to show you all something I'm working on right now, which may take me a little longer. I'm getting in my bag. This is not a secret. It's a secret, but not a secret. And this fun? So I made this for my daughter. Um, little fingerless mitt. And um, based on the mitt pattern, instead of like doing individual fingers, um, we did, this might be a little tight on me because it's made for her. Um, so we just made it open. Yeah? Isn't that nice? And then it's got a little detail on it. So I'm trying to fix the detail. I kind of messed it up on the side, so... Hey, I mess up too. <laughs> so um, this is uh, this is on needles, um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we like it. Everybody's giving me some love. <laughs> this was this weekend. She and I um, work at uh, church on. A, and she works on camera, and I work in the back, and I do um, shading, which is controlling the irises on like three different cameras. And she does a camera thing, and it gets really, really cold. And um, I have fingerless mitts for myself, and she can't find the ones I made for her out of Cascade yarn. I know. But it was when she had smaller hands. Anyway, so I made her this, and so I got to make her another one <laughs> for, to, to keep her nice and toasty. <laughs> so good. Oh, beautiful. Yes. This is from, if you want to know what this yarn is, oh my goodness, I have really enjoyed using it. It's, um, and the, the label's going to be backwards, but this is the um, new Karen Simply Soft Tweeds. Um, so it has these really pretty little tweed in it. Isn't that nice? And then I just used the white version, or the cream version. So this is color Gray Heather. And then... Um, the other one is off-white, that one. So um, I'm working on the needle version right now. Um, anyway, it feels really nice. I really like how it works up. But like, anyway, it's really, really enjoyable. It's 97% uh, acrylic and 3% viscose, which gives it that little bit of a slick kind of look to it um, but with the tweed and stuff it has this nice hand I like the little nubbiness of it so if you haven't checked out this yarn I suggest you do um, it's uh, it's in like um, real basic colors I think it's like these are all the tweed colors on it there's a um, the brown and um, then the gray and then the off-white um, and then, of course, it coordinates. They have whites and grays without the flex um, that coordinate in their Simply Soft line, but these are the tweeds. So, um, Alyssa says, yes, it does. It's so easy to work with. So, you've worked with it, too? 
Yeah, um, really, really nice. And I love how it turns out. I mean, I love tweeds. They're just, they just make you feel good. You know, like feel good foods, like comfort foods. This is like comfort yarn. Oh, I, I, I got to fix my, there's my boo-boo just to get out there. That was my little boo-boo. I got to, what did I do there? I'll have to go check that out. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Cracking myself up. Oh, gosh. <coughs> That's what happens when you're not feeling well and you get on camera and you start hacking up a lung. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm so glad you guys joined me today. Uh, thanks for letting me show all that to you. Um, there are videos this Friday. Um, I might have one midweek come out. Who knows? Uh, lots of stuff coming out. Just keep in touch and um, keep notified. If you want to know when stuff comes out, you got to hit those notifications on YouTube. Go click on subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can select to get emails um, so that way it just comes right out and you don't have to wait for a newsletter or anything because it'll just come to you. And for Facebook, when you click on like on my page, um, you can click on follow. And the pages that I really like or people, um, I'll click uh, see first. And so it jumps up in the top of my feed. And then also you can like get a notifications when they go, get notifications when they go live. So I do that for my favorite pages too. So that's just a little trick if you don't know that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, Denise says, I love all your projects. I just got to find time to do. Yeah. And I mean, I don't expect everybody to do everything unless you're just, you're just, you're able to do that, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, but I love when you guys share them. Um, so if you share to our page, and that's what I'm going to need you to do for this contest. So um, you can say, um, whenever you go to Good Knit Kisses uh, Facebook page, you can click on um, see visitor posts and you can post from there or post on the main page and it'll go to that visitor post area and post your projects and, um, you know, tag me in it. Um, just hit that at symbol and start typing Good Knit Kisses and you should be able to, um, I'll, I'll be able to, to see it. It'll give me a notification. Um, it's actually better than just posting the page. You can actually hit at and then type Good Knit Kisses. That's a little trick. <laughs> and then I see it easier. <laughs> There's so many notifications that go off all the time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, um, Susan, oh, someone's saying congratulations. What happened? I missed something. Um, okay. You'll be holding a three day old in a few hours. Oh, Susan, that's awesome. Oh, <laughs> Lauren, I'm holding almost eight month old. That's awesome. Man, little babies. Oh, and someone's got a seven month old. You guys are awesome. Okay. I love the chats here. This is so cute. Oh, it's great. Oh, by the way, um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it, Kristen? Oh, the bracelets. We started having bracelets come in. Um, so for the Good Knit Kisses Pink Missions, the last thing I'll say, I got 40 bracelets in for the missions trip. So if anybody has any more to send, let me know. Next week, I'll be giving them to Brandy, and she'll be taking them on the, um, the trip later on this month. So if you still have some to send, be sure and send them. If you'll drop me a, um, a note in um, the Good Knit Kisses mail, um, the messages here, and just say, hey, Kristen, I'm sending you the bracelets. Um, or something for Embrace Grace. If you want to do Embrace Grace, that's fine too. Whatever you guys want to do. Um, so yeah, th these work out great because you can just cram a bunch in an envelope. Um, <laughs> I mean, of course, the postage goes up a little bit, but it's not like sending a box. So that's good. So I love the friendship bracelet thing because you can get several out of one ball. Like if you take two balls of um, cotton yarn, you can get a ton of these. So therefore, a mission trip. And there's a video on that telling more about it on YouTube. So anyway... All right, you guys have a great day. It's Columbus Day. Happy Columbus Day to the Americans. Happy Thanksgiving to the Canadians. Love you all. Have a wonderful day. Happy knitting and crochet. Bye, everyone.